WSL Finals, Tatiana Weston Webb is in the title match with Carissa Moore, number one and two in the world, surfing for the 2021 World Championship. We've got a maxed out crowd here in Southern California because it is on all Brazilian matchup. Italo Ferreira, the reigning world champ, taking on Felipe Toledo. Joe Trapel alongside 11 time world champ Kelly Slater. Kelly, Italo got this one incredibly quick off the sound of the horn. He did, and what a great way to start the heat. There was nothing um, really amazing on the ride. It was a good, clean ride, but nothing giant, and it was a lot of kind of that nice carve, good pace, but the wave never stood way up to let him get one of those tail releases or, or any kind of an air or anything, obviously, but um, good, solid surfing. He looks, he looks really strong. He looks uh, super loose. I think he just wanted to, wanted to get up and get going to see on a, seeing how he feels, but I mean, those are crisp, clean turns, and it didn't let him have a great finish. He had to climb it. That was a difficult section to, to kind of do something big with. Um, 517, uh, it's touch low maybe, but you know, I expect something more out of both these guys, and that'll just set the uh, standard for this heat, because as we know, I mean, what kind of stuff can go down? <laughs> it's so crazy two. looking at a, a whole, matchup like this. Gunfight. Toledo, number three in the world, got past Connor Coffin. That was extremely <laughs> close. Had to rely on that full rotation to get past Connor. And Italo coming into this event, the number two seed, winning an event a long time ago now, back at Newcastle over Gabriel Medina in the final. But Kelly, it's so interesting. We always talk about the energy of Italo. I mean, that stands out over any other part of his yep. personality. You see him on a paced wave like that, you're just, you're waiting for him to like freak out because he's yeah. not really a guy that has a tempo that just is relaxed and composed. Maybe Snips told him to just relax on that first wave. Yeah, maybe so. I, I think the, the thing I like, as, as I mentioned, uh, the Brazilian storm before, um, what's happened now is you got these three, these top three are, are so different in the way they are. Italo shows you everything he's doing, you know, it's like constant energy. It's just a constant social media stream of his life and it's really fun. Felipe is a little more, Felipe and, and Gabriel, I should say, are, are a little more, more of a mystery. Like, I live in the same town as Felipe, I don't know what he's up to. <laughs> um, but he's, he's a family guy and he's taking care of his kids and I was surfing with him down in Mexico and he, he seems so relaxed to me. And I think that's a thing that could be the difference I mean we'll have to see but Felipe hasn't been the guy everyone's been focused on this year it's been Italo it's been Gabriel it's been the, those two have been the show this year and um, although uh, Felipe had one of the most standout performances of the year at Surf Ranch I mean he was untouchable and we were all starting to think it was impossible for somebody to beat Gabriel there and then he just stepped it up and he's on that same board I believe that he rode there uh, four fin swallowtail and uh, he just he just looks smooth and calm he's just I don't know you could see that interview with him after his heat he was re so relaxed and uh, I like to see it I like to see the I, I think as fans we all like to see different types of personalities and these guys don't have a grudge match they don't hate each other because that's always fun <laughs> that's fun uh, too but, but it's cool how like yeah, Felipe has been a bit under the radar yeah. you know like, compared to the Brazilian world champs more specifically as we go to the deep stats powered by Hydro Flask. It's even. Yeah. This will settle it. Toledo and Ferreira for a piece where we kind of saw Toledo take a hold of Italo early when Italo was a rookie. We saw Toledo take the first three of their four matchups. Ferreira obviously getting the world title first, getting more wins off Toledo. And more specifically, I think the turning point, if they do have any rivalry, is when Italo beat Felipe at J Bay, and that was Toledo's kind of kingdom mm. for a couple of years there. Mm. Yeah, um, when when you think of the Olympics and Japan, the first thing for me is you think of small waves. It's going to be tiny. Uh, it's going to be whoever's the best in small waves. Felipe wasn't on that team. I think deep down inside, he's got a little bone to pick with that. And uh, he didn't get a chance at the gold medal. He didn't even, he wasn't, he didn't make the team. Um, in, in my opinion, he was the favorite to win in Japan because of what I thought the surf would do. The surf was a little bit bigger than we thought, obviously, and um, that could have changed the playing field. I, I think we can see Italo is a little more, he's got a little more power, um, but I would say down the line speed, Felipe is the fastest surfer in the world. And 
it's just a fun match to watch. It's just good to see these two guys. And, and I don't think at this point uh, that any of these guys, whoever of these three wins the world title, I don't think anyone's going to be let down. I don't think anyone's going to think, you know, these guys shouldn't be winning world titles. It's just the gloves are off now, and it's an even match. And, and uh, one of these guys is going to come up against Gabriel this afternoon. Priority with Toledo. Italo had the 517. On the right to start, Italo just up and out quickly. Mm. I mean, today we've seen the struggle, Kelly, of, of just getting good scores. There's been kind of that rip that we had running through. Is it getting any easier for these guys? Uh, I don't know. That one was a that was that was funny. I was just trying to pick up on the body language there, and it looked like Italo was unsure whether to go for that wave or not, and he kept kind of paddling. And he was not on it, and then he stood up, and the, you know, you, you get to take note take note of those things because that can be the kind of energy someone has in the moment and that can switch with a certain ride like whether they get a great one or the other person does and then that changes the whole sort of feeling of the heat um, but as we can see I don't think there's anything I think they both know there's not much in this heat so far as far as the big picture for Italo world title defense you know he's really going through that for the first time in his yeah. career how do you think he's handled that so far He's having fun. <laughs> he doesn't look stressed out to me, you know. He's uh, he's quickly becoming a, a fan favorite all around the world. I remember uh, it would have been two years ago now. He went to Florida and did some promotion, and one of my best buddies took his kid to meet him, and he, he was just texting me, telling me, like, what a nice guy uh, Italo was and how stoked his kid was to meet him. And I sent the picture to, to, to Italo and them together. And he's like, oh, yeah, I remember, man. That's so cool. And... Let's see what do we got here. Nice fade. Oh, weird little bobble, but that's, you know, just a bump in the wave there. And we'll see where this one goes. It's going kind of way out into the bay, and I think this wave, wow, he, that was a great turn because it looked like the section disappeared on him. Let's see if he goes for it here. And he's, <laughs> I mean, this guy sleeps through every verses. It's ridiculous. Um, one more for the boys. Double full and, uh, rotations for Felipe Toledo on his opening wave <laughs> against Italo Ferreira. Is he relaxed? He looks comfortable, composed. Ricardinho wearing that bright orange shirt. That's a famous shirt. I don't know if he ever washes it, but it's bright orange. Felipe can see it. That shirt has pissed me off so many times. <laughs> I think a lot of competitors, because yeah. it's, uh, it's it definitely helped Toledo get a lot of wins. It's an energy. No, he, ha he, he has. And, um, Watch this wave. Watch, watch the way this wave goes down. So watch. He kind of almost digs the rail here. Oh, a weird little bump in the wave. And you could almost give up there, and then he has to chase it down. And then watch this section pop up, and then it avoids him. So he turns it into a carve. And the board just kept a clean rail. And here comes the section. Boom. Big, clean, complete rotation in the air. Wave sort of slows up. And this is, this is where a guy like Felipe just makes a wave become a great wave and that ride if you were down here on the beach watching pretty much anyone else on earth besides maybe the other two guys in this contest surf that wave it would have you wouldn't remember it and uh now it's a standout ride and that's what that's what wins these kind of uh battles so right here again see how the lip disappeared and somehow he was able to you know he is riding a quad so there's a little more thrust from that gosh what a great uh what a great timing there and um, so inventive. It, it's like he knows when he lands where he's going to be into the next turn, and he's already paced out the rest of the wave. And uh, <laughs> just having some fun. He's, he's so relaxed, you know. It's, it's really fun to watch, you know. Um, he's got his family. He's got his kids. This would be the biggest thing in his career ever to win this world title. But at the same time, I think he's super content, and that's what makes him so relaxed. He's made two airs on the same wave. Incredibly normal, especially a full rotation. Yeah, normalized double airs. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like when you watch Toledo, he makes that look like it's another day at lower trestles. And I think sometimes we reflect on big airs he's done here in the, the normal events of the past, where I think the judges sometimes do too, where he'll be upside down, inverted. And this time, a two rotation on one wave it lowers for Toledo gets him a 7.33 so first wave in the lead Italo to second with his 517 
and you're the most successful surfer at lowers, Kelly. And I know I've seen finals where you've won on set waves and you've saved yourself a lot of times getting waves kind of like what Felipe did. If you have that element in your game where you can turn a wave that looks like nothing more than a five with moves like that, it's a real secret to success on this wave. Yeah, I mean, getting overscored helps too. <laughs> <laughs> what year was that? Uh, I just uh, just throwing it out there in case it happened, you know. But I mean, I, well, because the thing that came up to me there was, as far as the surfing goes, he got a little underscored. But there was a lot of down, the, the pacing on that wave. There's a lot of sort of downtime. But in, bet in between the big moves was a little bit of downtime and slow wave. Let's look and see if if Itala is going to go left. He doesn't. It was a, oh, it was a pretty good left, um, and. I've really been wondering all morning if it's going to come into play for Italo and, and, and Gabrielle because you can do big airs, you can throw big stuff at it, you can catch a lot of waves and get back out quickly. It's not that it's not the factor of that long paddle. I know the jet ski helps a little bit, um, but they're they're trying to go slow so they don't wake it out when they bring the guys and girls back out the back. But uh, um, we'll see as time winds down here. If Italo doesn't get going soon, if he'll start kind of getting some of those med medium inside lefts. Now 21-25 on the clock. The separation between Felipe and Italo. Let's get more insight with former head judge Rich Porta. Hi, Jai. Hey, Rich. Uh, just to explain the difference of the 5-1-7 to the 7-3-3 that we have in this match. Yeah, the 5-1-7, the it, was, it was as Kelly alluded. It was just a standard sort of ride. The, the wave didn't allow for any really big turns, like really great surfing, but just good surfing. And then Philippe's score right then, um, as Kelly also said, you know, he, he started off, he got the little wobble at the start and then got the little cut back in and then, of course, two really nice rotations. But we go back to Philippe's earlier wave with the um, 817, which is a way better surfed wave for me. You know, we've still got Connor's 85 and Philippe's 84. So we've, I think the judges are really doing a good job in, in holding their scale throughout heat to heat. I, I think they're right on track, the boys and girls in there. Thank you so much, Rich, for the explanation. It's all about your comparisons. So right now he's just explaining that Italo, mid-range score. He took a nice easy pace on those backhand turns, and then Felipe going above the lip, 7-3-3, was able to take the lead on his opener. He was well-paced against Connor Kelly. He only caught two waves. So he's definitely thinking about strategy, not trying to tire himself out before the title match. Yeah, it's, it's important to pick the right waves and pace yourself, too. Um, you don't have to go out there and catch five or six or seven waves. You need two waves. You need to surf them really well. And this one has a nice wall and I think a better pace. And we'll, we'll really see the speed come into to play here as the, the end of this wave comes down. Boom, a climb with a tail drift. Nice big carve, some variety there. We'll see what he's going to do here. Boom, good finish. And then we got Italo behind him on a runner. He's got to chase it down. Crazy big float, gets around it. Boom, big power turn. And this is what we came to watch. Um, I would say a, a bit more variety for, for Felipe. I think Italo is selling it a little bit there, but it was, it was, there weren't many people who could ride that wave as well as he just did. Um, I'll have to watch him back. I got a little caught up watching live, watching Felipe, but it seemed like Felipe's wave, it wasn't as fast down line. It wasn't as big of a wave. Um, it, and he had to kind of manufacture a couple things, but he did so well to get such good variety. Let's see, just starting out here, Italo. And then this is where he has to really perfect the lip line climb. So he had to climb over it. He got bounced on the way up. He could have caught that outside rail. And then boom, pretty perfect timing there. Um, a lot of good power. And then, uh, yeah, didn't really let him get super um, dynamic on that last turn. He got a little stuffed under the lip. If, I mean, look, we're being critical of the best guys in the world here. Um, we'll watch, watch this again. Good start. Wave kind of flattens out on him. Good little cutback to pace it. And then here, boom, gets a tail drift. Uh, and I, like I said, smaller wave, but there's variety. Big carve all the way back around and hits it early and kind of extends through that. I, I think I do like that a little bit better myself, but it wasn't as big a wave, so it wasn't as as difficult um, to kind of keep the pace as Ethelo's wave was. And 
Yeah, we're going to see where this comes in. I don't want to be a judge on, on this this one because they're, they're really two different types of... Uh, Italo was chasing it down with a lot more speed and, and had to surf it powerfully. And, and Felipe had to figure out how to pace and, and put the variety in to get the right line on that wave. So two different approaches there. What a great battle here for two talented Brazilians. Felipe fighting for his first ever world title. And Italo looking to back up his first world title from 2019. More action to come here at the Rip Curl WSL Finals right after this. I'm still underway. Number two in the world, the reigning world champ, Italo Ferreira. And number three in the world, Felipe Toledo, battling out here at Lower Trestles for a shot to take on Gabriel Medina in the title match. Joe Trupel with 11-time world champ, six-time lowers champ, Kelly Slater for the call. Toledo in the lead with a 7-3-3 and his last a 7-0-7. And Italo a 7-2-7 on that last wave before we went to break. Incredibly close now, Toledo with the lead and priority mm. with a ton of time to go. Yeah, um, I would say really not a lot in it though because they're sort of uh, Italo's best wave and, and Felipe's best two. They're all the same really. Um, I did call, I did say that I, I probably preferred Felipe's a little bit for the variety, but I was talking to Pete Mel off offline there while we were away and, and he said, you know, I think maybe uh, maybe just because of the speed and the size of the wave and that big floater that Ethelo might just get the nod there and that really probably was the difference. The the amount of uh, power being thrown back at Ethelo to land that was, was was pretty insane but here we go again look at the flow there the speed little tiny catch on that bottom turn going into that cutback uh see this way the wave was a little bit slower and he had to kind of go down and create the lip so he's sort of waiting for the wave and then boom a big huge finish i love that and then we'll watch straight into straight into italo uh gets a little cut back here and then he has to chase it down and catch up to this so watch the climb watch how Watch how precise he has to be here. And then the bump coming back up at him. This is the critical part. Boom, it could easily have taken his rail out. He saw it coming, nails the big power carve there, and uh, sets up the finish. I think he wanted something a little bigger. He could have gone right into the excellent range, but uh, a good finish nonetheless. And he knows he's in the heat right there. And uh, all of a sudden, he's, he's able to apply a little bit of pressure back to Felipe, not the other way around. If he didn't click that last turn and he ends up with a, a mid-range five or something, then He's, he's dug a hole for himself because it's a little bit inconsistent right now for, for these waves they're looking for. So still incredibly close. Toledo out in front. Uh, Strider Wazalewski with a question for you, Kelly. Mm. Yeah, Kelly. Uh, well, I got a good question for you coming at you about maneuver choices. So these waves are, are moving. You're, you got a, a moving platform coming at you. You got a, you're trying to please the judges and you're making decisions on the fly. How do you make a decision for each section and each maneuver that you do? Yeah, I, I think that work's just already done for these guys because they're confident in what they can do. Any section that comes at them, they can they can throw at it what it's asking of them. And uh, I think you can't be hesitant. I, the idea is you got to just throw whatever the section allows or else you get exposed that you weren't completely committed. And look at this. What a good wave for Felipe so far. It's a better pace to start this wave all out. We'll see if it's got the end section for him. And... Uh, here he goes, running through this inside. And here comes the, the money part of this wave. Boom, big drift. Does he stick it? He does. What an and, incredible uh, ride for Toledo. Oh, A lot man. of different types of turn done with so much speed. One of the most spontaneous surfers in the world, mm. looking really comfortable. Relax, look at him. Just breathing up, waiting for the ski. And uh, no pressure on himself. He doesn't look overly pleased or, or stressed or any of that. It's just game face and just relaxation for him it, but I mean it doesn't look, he doesn't look uh, he doesn't look like he's he, he's he's so, his demeanor just just really good for the day you know he doesn't look overly stressed or he's trying to force anything but he's not backing off so it's just a it's such a good combination of aggression and, and calmness I saw him the day before the event started in the parking lot. He said lowers is as good as it gets, but he's keeping everything very normal, taking the kids to school. I think he's channeling that tr normal rhythm, even though there's a world title on the line. Yeah, and this one stood up much better for him there. You could see he, if he lost, if the tail lifted too much there, he could have dug the nose, so he really unweighted on that front foot, waiting for this wave. Almost a little catch there if you're gonna if you're gonna be critical. And then here, 
It's, it's time to decide. Boom, and he just throws the big tail out instead of going for the big air reverse because you can see that section was more down the line kind of steepness. It wasn't, it wasn't a section coming at him with a, a whitewash landing. There was room for carve and hitting it, so he made a really good decision on which, which maneuver to fit in there. I think an air would have been difficult to, to complete. And uh, just a, a really well surf wave. I mean, I, I consider this excellent surfing. We'll see where the judges go with it. No rotation like he had earlier on a couple of his waves. But it, he did exactly what the wave asked. And see how he just drifts the tail out? And boom, his biggest score of the heat. And really just great surfing. Can't argue with that. 8.5 for Felipe. 7.33 is now his low score. The one he's throwing away is a 7.07. So Toledo in sync with the pace of this wave. Won the event here in 2017 in a classic final over Jordy Smith. He had a couple of semifinals before that, but we always knew this would be one of his favorite venues in the world. He actually moved his whole family here to San Clemente, all the way from Ubatuba, Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we've seen so much of Toledo qualifying when he was really still 16 years of age. And it was really 2015, that win at Snapper, which officially made him a world title contender. And he's had to recover from some heartbreaking losses in the title race. I mean, kind of with you, Kelly, at Pipeline, we reflect on some of those moments. So he's gone through all those really, really terrible lows when you feel like you're so close to a world title mm. in the way the back door he fell on. I mean, that yeah. was incredibly close to getting a big score to move on. Yeah. Um, as I remember the situation that he it wasn't going to put him in the lead. But it was going to need, he was only going to need a, a relatively small score compared to my other score to, to get past me. That was a tough one for me, too, because I was really in, in Felipe's camp. You know, he and I have been friends for a long time, and I wanted to help him out there because I know that that's been, that's been the place where people have been critical of him and the bigger barreling stuff. And uh, so I gave him some help with, with lineups and, and a few tips I really don't share with people. <laughs> And uh, I was really pulling for him. And then when I had him in the heat, I just went, that's all done. You know, like, I got to go do my job. And, and, you know, if he's the guy for the, for the job, he's going to beat me. And, he, you know, he's put the work in, and he'll make the right choices or do the surfing that's, that's needed. But he had the best wave in that heat. Like you said, I, I was surprised he made it as far as he did. And he fell in the easy, the, the sort of relatively easy part for that wave. I think he maybe surprised himself, like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm coming out. And then he, he caught his edge. I don't know. I it's, don't know uh, how quickly we could pull that wave up, but I'd love to see it again. It was. Uh, it's crazy because I you heard think the crowd about, on the beach go nuts. It so was like, so close. What happened there? And for Felipe on that side to have those heartbreaking moments toward the end, and then Italo kind of on a different route to greatness, mm -hmm. where he was building, figured out how to win events. His first at Bell's over Mick. Once he got that win, then he found himself in a final at Pike to decide the world title against Medina and teamed up with your good friend Shane Dorian. It almost yeah. felt like. He had a more a cleaner rise with maybe not as much heartbreak, at least that that we got to see. Yeah, I think he's a real testament to believing in yourself and trusting that what you have is something magic. And you can see he just believes it and he goes with it. And everyone, I think everyone's a fan of Italo. The guy's fun. He's like not bothered by anything. He's 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 just he's just cool, man. I love the guy. Toledo now off the again. bottom, big oh, snap, a lot of power and great timing. Big hammer again, two explosive turns. This is what I've been kind of waiting for, to, to, to see someone get two, two waves on the board, two good scores on the board, so they can kind of let loose. And you see that aggression come out there. Those were the best two cars I've seen today. Um, and that's even considering Connor. Connor surfed really well. But that morning, a little bit of morning sickness on the wave, Connor almost had it figure out how to let the, the board push back at him off the off the water. But this one really stood up. There's a little wind on the lip now and oh my gosh, perfect hammer there. I mean, imagine if there were two more sections in that. He's looking at another 8.5 or something and uh, really putting Itello on the back foot. But this is great surfing. Comfort level on a magic quad that he's used for a lot of events this season, mm. including the Surf Ranch victory over Gabriel Medina. What makes Toledo so different just on this wave specifically? Well, the first time I surf, first time I saw uh, Felipe surf was at the U.S. Open, the, the junior, and he beat Connor and a, a bunch John of guys. John John. John John. Yeah, he kind of smoked heat. the field. In <laughs> fact, I'm sure he would have won the, the, the main event as well, but he, I don't think he was in it. 
Um, he was just doing these rotations that were so seamless and linking everything together, and he wasn't bouncing from the outside to the inside. He's so light on his feet, and he's just carving through, and everyone was looking at the other guys in that heat, and he was really the underdog. No one really knew to what level he could surf, and I, I think that was a moment I realized this guy's a threat for world titles straight away, like before he's 20, you know? And uh, as you said, he hasn't quite matched what we all know he, his talent is. Um, that's not to say he hasn't put in some of the best performances anyone's ever seen, you know, the j Bay stuff and um, surfing out here at Lowers. And where he has connected is, it's like what surfing should be when you see it, and it's, it's, it's great to watch. And, and Italo somehow has gotten on the better side of that energy and just made it happen for himself. Um, but what a great match to, to watch for a showdown to go against a man. It's been the guy of the year. Great stories from both these athletes. Four apiece with their previous matchups. You just go into this year. We had Felipe Toledo win at Margaret River. A huge win for him, so multiple victor victories. Italo was able to get past Felipe in the event before that up at Newcastle in the semifinals. So one apiece this season. And I think that's what the best part about this format is. You want the best guys to surf against each other on one day. You don't want it to be a spoiler who's down in the ranks, who's on a roll. It's like for an entire season, the best of the best meeting up here at Lower Trestles. And at the moment, it's Toledo with the lead. Where's the positioning of Italo Ferrer at the moment, Strider? Well, Italo looks like he's moved over to the left. He knows he needs to go to that firepower mm. that he has above the lip. It looks like he's positioned himself well over there. He needs an 8.7. And, well, I, we all know what he can do above the lip line out here. We've been seeing him and his performances on the lead up and him positioning himself well over there. So we'll see what happens. But it, it's so hard to find yourself in that right spot on that apex of the peak out here today with the moving swell and you know, two different swells in the water. Time's winding down. <laughs> this is just getting better and better and better. I love it. Thank you so much, Strider. I was talking to Mike Parsons, who's coaching Italo. He said the hardest thing maybe that they've had to deal with the last couple of weeks is keeping Italo out of T-Street. I mean, the guy has so much energy. He wants to catch <laughs> a thousand waves. So he's just trying to get him down here to lowers, work on equipment. And, geez, Timmy Patterson has been building boards all the way from glassing him, setting the fins himself. Italo one day in the water told me he was trying eight boards that day. Wow. And then Scotty Metz, who works there, was like, I lost track of the number of boards. Timmy, even last night, made an emergency surfboard just in case. Mm. It's crazy that you can go through all of that when the clock's ticking and you're going to be out there competing any day. Yeah. I actually talked to uh, Felipe specifically about a situation like this. So Strider said he's moving in. He's going to try to eye those lefts up. They're shorter paddled. He could probably still, if he caught one right now, he could get two waves. In fact, I just saw a great left scoot underneath them. They were probably a little bit deep for, but it was steep, it was glassy, and he could have hammered out a couple airs on that wave. Um, but I said to Felipe, I, I go, you know, it could, if, it's, if it's got a little west wind swell and it, it's hooking on those lefts, it could turn into a big frontside air fest for the, those guys. And he goes, well, I'll just go like this through the air over there, on to, on, over there too, <laughs> you know, backside. Oh, uh, and he's done some huge ones. Yeah, like the one in France the other year, and, and uh, so, I don't think he was worried whether he had to go right or left. He's but so incredibly lethal. It's really directions. been performed on the rights today, though, hasn't it, by everybody? It really has stood out. I mean, in the early couple matches, the, the water was kind of settling still for the swell peaking last night. And we saw Joanne Faye just choose the left, but that was a really challenging opening match. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, everything focused on the right. Toledo surfing a very paced game. I Two waves against a, Connor, four waves against Italo here. I thought it was a great choice by Joanne to go left because her, her backhand surfing is probably a little bit stronger than Stephanie's. That's where she could differentiate herself. Here comes a big set. I think we're going to see one last, one last wave out of uh, Italo, and we'll see. Uh, does he get over to the left? He looks a little bit deep for the left to me. Down to... Just over a minute on the clock. Italo, the reigning world champ with priority. Can he find the score on this right? It's a big section. Tail high punt. Explodes on the landing. Chasing an 8-7. And the reigning world champ could be in trouble. 45 seconds to go. He's in trouble, but you know, he's always going to go out on his shield, wasn't he? 
Oh yeah. He's not gonna he's he's not gonna miss that section or kick out and try to find another wave. That air um, has saved him so many times in the last yeah. few seasons on tour. Yeah, I mean the first time it did it was against Kalohe on the Gold Coast and small little northeast wind, one to two footers and and uh, he got his I don't know. I don't know if it was his first win, but one of his early wins. It was. For yeah. AOR, he early wins. His early first wins, was at yeah. Bowser, and then the following year, he started off world number one in that close seat with Kolohe, but it saved him also against Jordy at Super Tubos to get in the title showdown in 2019. But has he run out of time? Toledo looks at that wave, searching for Italo. He's not to be found. Number three in the world, Felipe Toledo, an 8-5 and a 7-4-7, seven, seven, upsets the reigning world champion at Lower Trestles, and he will meet Gabriel Medina in the title match later on today. As you can check it out from early this morning, Connor got past Morgan, Felipe beat Coffin, and he just took out the reigning world champ with that 8.5 to shut this one down. It'll be all about Medina and Felipe.